Hello everyone, welcome to our discussion on uh, sex determination. So, sex determination in biology uh, is a system or it is a process by which, uh, or a process which decides whether the organism is a male or a female. So, in this we will be discussing about uh, the sex determination in different types of organisms, how uh, a particular organism, a particular embryo will be decided to have a male type of uh, development or a female type of development or a particular organism is how it is being developed into or what is the factors that decides whether an embryo should be a male or a female. So these are the points or these are the uh, topics that will be discussed under this particular uh, section which is called as sex determination. So to begin with, uh, the fundamental hereditary difference observed among the individuals of the same species is just the sex. Because in uh, if you take uh, the organism, they are morphologically uh, similar uh, or genetically they are identical and in that morphological similarity uh, itself, male as well as female in dioecious organisms, uh, males as well as female male they have uh, a different pattern although morphologically um, um, many of their characters remain the same they are morphologically uh, some differences which determine whether they are male or female so it is a tendency of an organism to produce maleness or female femaleness so sexually reproducing organisms are uh, classified mainly into two types they are dioecious organisms and monoecious or hermaphrodites. So this particular classification that is uh, dioecious, monoecious or hermaphrodite is uh, uh, mainly based on animals uh, in animals. So dioecious um, uh, animals, the male and females are different individuals like humans. Uh, male is a different individual and female is a different individual where males produce the gametes which are called as sperms and females produce the gametes which are called as eggs. So the examples of uh, dioecious organisms are mainly um, animals as well as plants. Coming to monoecious or hermaphrodites, both monoecious and hermaphrodites are similar uh, in the case of animals. Here, the male and female reproductive organs uh, organs are present in the, or male and female gonads, or reproductive structures are present in the same individual, and it, they have the capacity to produce both the sp um, sperms as well as male. So, different types of uh, hermaphrodites can be observed. Uh, in some cases, uh, both the uh, uh, both the male and female uh, reproductive system will be present throughout the entire uh, life of the organism. Example, earthworm. Uh, or in some cases, in some stage of uh, its life, uh, the particular organism will be uh, producing or will be male, and at a particular time, it will uh, it will uh, develop it, uh, itself into a female. For example, in the case of the uh, marine worm, which is Cynorhabditis elegans, you can see that, or uh, the worm which is called as uh, Cynorhabditis elegans, uh, you can see that the particular worm uh, in the earlier part of its life it is male uh, the gonad is a uh, male type it produces sperms and sperms are deposited in its body after sperm deposition uh, the particular organism it shifts the pattern of development or its gonad into a female and it produces sex so different types of hermaphrodites can be observed so in any case monoecious or uh, hermaphrodite animals uh, they are those animals which are having the capacity to produce both uh, male gametes as well as female gametes. Uh, but in the case of plants, you have uh, a different um, definition for these three terms. These three terms are distinct in the case of plants. In the uh, when you come to plants, a dioecious plant or a dioecious type of plant means you can see uh, see that in that case the male plant as well as female plant is different. You have a male plant separately and you have a female plant separately where the male plant produces only male flowers and female plant produces only female flowers. So that is dioecious in the case of plants. When you come to plants, you have separate definitions for monoecious as well as hermaphrodites. Uh, in the case of monoecious plants, in monoecious plants, uh, what you can see is that the same plant produces different flowers that is they have different male flower as well as female flower so the, the same plant producing male flower and female flower is taken as an example of what is called as a monoecious uh, uh, plant uh, 
but when you come to uh, hermaphrodites or hermaphrodite plants you can see that the example is hibiscus where the same flower is having both uh, male as well as female uh, characters that is I, the ovary as well as the stamens or the pollens are present in the same flower so that is hermaphrodites in the case of plants but when you come to animals as we explained earlier in animals both monoecious and hermaphrodites both are uh, used interchangeably but uh, the definition is the same in the case of animals but when you come to plants it is different in plants monoecious means it is a single plant which is producing two different type of flowers that means two types of flowers can be seen in the plant you have a male flower as well as a female flower separately in the same plant when you come to hermaphrodites in plants, uh, they, the same flower hosts both the uh, stamen as well as the ovary. Example is hibiscus, that is hermaphrodite, but uh, hermaphrodites in the case of plants. But in animals, both monoecious and hermaphrodites are similar. So that's about uh, a, an introduction to what is called as uh, the different uh, types of sexually reproducing organisms. And uh, in sexually reproducing organisms, uh, there are two types of chromosomes present in such animals. They are called as autosomes as well as allosomes or sex chromosomes. These autosomes are entirely concerned with uh, the somatic functions of the body or they determine the somatic characters of the body or body characters other than sex. So they do not have the capacity to determine whether the organism will be a male or a female. The allosomes or the sex chromosome are the chromosomes that determine the sex of an individual. So sex determination is mostly associated with the dimorphism of the sex chromosome. Dimorphism in the sense that sex chromosomes are usually designated. Uh, in animals, it is, uh, there are many representations which we will come to it later. So generally, sex chromosomes are represented by the alphabet X and Y are the sex chromosome. And even though they are homologous chromosomes, they are uh, different in their size and shape when you come to uh, humans. We are talking about, we take the examples of humans and we discuss here. So in the case of humans, you have two different type of uh, uh, sex chromosome, uh, X as well as Y chromosome. And if you compare with that of uh, the, uh, the size and shape of these particular chromosome, it is observed that uh, they are, even though they are homologous, uh, in every case you can see that homologous chromosome, they will have a similar structure, uh, similar size, etc. But only in this particular case of sex chromosome, uh, the size of the sex chromosome, that is X and Y, is not the same. They are having different size as well as they are having different shape. Coming on to the, uh, directly moving on to uh, the mechanisms of sex determination, there are many theories which are proposed to explain sex determination in uh, animals because different animals, they have different uh, mechanisms for sex determination and uh, mainly there are four different types which are explained. Uh, when you come to humans, we are having the first type of sex determination which is uh, called as the uh, chromosomal theory of sex determination where in the case of uh, humans and uh, most of the mammals, we have uh, chromosomal sex determination where the sex of the individual is determined by the uh, type of chromosome which is present. That is called as chromosomal. And in some cases, you have uh, another type where uh, there is a balance of gene which is called as genic balance theory. Uh, in some organisms, you have um, the sex determined by the environment which is called as environment sex determination and also in some cases it is determined by uh, exclusively by hormones and that is called as hormonal sex determination. So these are the um, major type of uh, uh, mechanisms whereby uh, organisms determine their sex whether to be whether that particular embryo the fertilized um, egg or the embryo should form a zygote which uh, to be developed into a male or a uh, female one. Uh, so, we will be discussing each type uh, in detail. So, the first one we will be discussing uh, uh, now which is called as the uh, chromosomal theory of sex determination. So, coming to the chromosomal theory of sex determination, it was proposed by Corrins and this theory is otherwise called as the theory of heterogamesis. So, this is called as uh, the theory of heterogamesis because as we discussed uh, the case with humans, we saw that we are having two different type of uh, sex chromosome 
and uh, it is not by uh, being uh, even though they are homologous uh, they are there are two different types of sex chromosomes which determine the sex and because of that uh, this particular because there are two different types of chromosomes which are determining the sex of an organism the theory is also called as the theory of heterogamous Uh, so there is uh, in this case there is a pair of sex chromosomes uh, in both the sexes either the male or the female will be heterogametic heterogametic in the sense uh, a particular uh, organism or a particular individual will have two different type of sex chromosome so either the male can be heterogametic so if you take the case of uh, humans we know that males are having the sex chromosome xy and females are having xx that means uh, in the case of females they are having the same pair of sex chromosome uh, uh, the pairs are the same in that case they are called as or they are said to be homogametic but when you come to human uh, males they are uh, uh, heterogametic in the sense that their sex chromosomes are they are having two different types of sex chromosomes so if uh, the parent if the parent is heterogametic Now, and we are considering an example uh, of an organism which is having three pairs of chromosome. That is its chromosome number. Uh, humans are having twenty-three pairs. In this case, uh, the particular organism is having three pairs. In that case, uh, we are considering uh, two pairs as autosomes and one pair as the sex chromosome. Just for discussion, we are considering a particular organism. Uh, the organism in total it is having. three pairs of chromosomes like 23 pairs in humans so out of the three pairs of chromosomes if that particular uh, parent is uh, homo heterogametic it will produce two types of gametes one will be x chromosome one type of gamete uh, will have x chromosome in it the other type uh, either it will have a y chromosome or it will not have a y chromosome so that is the condition where uh, uh, um, of heterogametic individuals uh, they can produce gametes with x chromosome with y chromosome or without y chromosome okay uh, so that is uh, the heterogametic parent but in, and the genotype of the individual as you see here now this is the uh, uh, 2aa whenever you see a representation aa it denotes autosomal chromosome and when you when an organism is having three pairs of chromosome in its body two pairs will be autosomes and one pair will be uh, allosomous sex chromosome and that two pairs is represented by 2aa that means 2aa means it is a uh, four chromosome four autosomes and if you are denoting or if you take the same notation for humans this will be 22 aa that means we are having 22 pairs of allosomes plus xy or the heterogametic uh, individual the heterogametic this is the heterogametic individual uh, the heterogametic individual will be x0 and such uh, such individuals will produce uh, gametes in this particular form it will be uh, the 2a which is the haploid of that 2a plus x 2a plus y and 2a plus 0 this is a type of gamete that can be produced from such heterogametic individuals so if a parent is homogametic only one type of gamete will be produced by that particular parent and the genotype will be uh, 2aa uh, xx and the gametes it will produce only a single type of gamete which is 2a plus x because it is homogametic homogametic same type of gamete all the gamete produced will be the of uh, the same type but the difference here is uh, heterogametic individual there, there can be two different kinds of individuals the individuals one individual might have the sex chromosome xy there is another group of individual which is having one x chromosome and the other one is lacking and the one which is lacking is represented by zero that means it does not have one x chromosome that is also considered as a heterogametic uh, individual in that case they produce three different types of uh, gametes if it is xy that organ or that individual will produce uh, a haploid or a gamete or a sperm it contains if it is a male it produces a sperm containing x sperm containing y if that individual is having the sex chromosome x0 it will be producing a uh, sperm with uh, half of the sperms will carry x chromosome half of the chrom or uh, half of the sperms will not carry any sex chromosome so that is a condition for this particular uh, 
type which is called as a heterogametic type. So in uh, chromosomal sex determination, we usually come across two different type of systems. Uh, one is the normal uh, XXXY system and also XXX0 system. The second is XWZZ uh, as well as uh, uh, ZW. Uh, ZZ system. So, uh, these are the two different systems that we are going to explain. Uh, the first type of system is usually present in uh, humans, in mammals and rosophila. The second type is present in many of the insects, uh, moths, butterflies, grasshoppers, etc. They show this type of system which is uh, going to be discussed. Uh, and uh, so we'll be uh, first discussing the first system, which is uh, XXXY and XXX0 system. In that, we'll be uh, first focusing on XXXY system, which is called as Ligas model. So it is called as Ligas model because it was first uh, uh, first reported in uh, Ligas uh, organisms. Ligase organism, the first one uh, uh, which was reported, and hence it is called as Ligas model. So, in this particular model, you have uh, XX female and XY male, where females are homogametic and males are heterogametic, the case with uh, normal females and, and uh, in humans. So, this is the type that is seen in Drosophila, humans and other mammals. So, here the female produces one type of uh, ova uh, with uh, X chromosome and male produces two types of sperms. Half of the sperms will carry X chromosome and half of the sperms will be carrying uh, Y chromosomes. So, we will uh, uh, take uh, one example uh, each. Uh, sex determination in Drosophila. So, in Drosophila, as you can see in this particular diagram, in Drosophila, they are having uh, four pairs of uh, chromosome, three pairs of autosomes and one pair of uh, sex chromosome. So, uh, in this, uh, the three pairs of uh, autosomes, uh, the one pair is a dotted one. You can see here it is uh, very small. Um, I will zoom it. So, these two, uh, two dots, these are one pair of autosomes. Okay. The two dots which is represented there, they are the uh, one pair of autosomes. And the other two pairs are these U shape, the purple one and the orange one. These two are the other autosomes. The three pairs of autosomes are these um, U shaped purple and uh, orange one and the two dots here. So, that is the three pairs of autosomes in Drosophila. And coming to the uh, sex chromosomes in females, so this is a male one. So, first, if you take females, they are having uh, in females, the, they are homogametic as we discussed because this is a system where females are homogametic. So, females are having the sex chromosomes uh, which are represented by rod shaped X chromosome. And when you come to male being uh, heterogametic, uh, they have one rod shaped sex chromosome and one uh, Y shaped or a hook shaped, uh, hook shaped Y chromosome. The Y shape is hook, hook shaped, this blue color, hook shaped in the case of Drosophila. So, uh, in females, our females will be represented by 3A because they are having 4 pairs of uh, chromosomes in their body. Uh, 3 pairs will be autosomes, so 3A plus XX and males will be 3A plus XY. And here the male produces uh, two types of sperms. Half of the sperms will be 3A plus X and the other half will be 3A plus Y. Females produce only one type of uh, egg or the ova which is 3A plus X. And in this case, the sex of the uh, organism is usually determined by, uh, here the sex of the organism is determined by uh, the uh, male uh, in the sense that uh, uh, what happens here is uh, why uh, it is uh, said so, why uh, the uh, male is determining the sex in this case because it is dependent on what type of sperm is uh, being fertilizing the egg. The egg is only of a sing similar type. Similar homogametic eggs are produced. So, which sperm is being fertilized with the egg? That determines the, uh, the sex of that particular individual. That means if the egg is getting fertilized with X chromosome or X containing sperm, it will be a female. If uh, the egg is getting fertilized with a Y containing sperm, that will be a uh, male. So, here the sex is determined by the type of uh, sperms that is being fertilizing the egg. So, the determining factor, uh, the sex determining factor or the sex determining, uh, 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 what to say, the sex determining uh, 
uh, uh, factor itself uh, uh, in the case of uh, uh, xx xy system is the sperms or the males males determine or the um, uh, sperms determine which type of sex is produced by those uh, which type of sex is being uh, produced in the zygote that means if the sperm is x the uh, individual or the zygote will be uh, female if the uh, sperm is y it will be uh, the particular zygote will be male so that is why uh, you say so uh, so this is what in uh, Uh, sex determination in Drosophila. Uh, coming to sex determination in uh, the humans. So, early human embryos. So, we are going to discuss how uh, sex is determined in uh, human embryos. So, we are going to discuss a particular pathway by which uh, this is being determined. So, we are going to discuss uh, 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 two conditions. Uh, what happens in an embryo which is XX? So we said that the determining factor is uh, the uh, uh, the sperms. So what happens? So there should be something uh, to trigger the development of the male uh, reproductive system, and there should be something to trigger uh, to trigger the female reproductive uh, uh, or the male reproductive system as well as the female reproductive system after um, the zygote is formed. So that is the condition what we are going to discuss here sex determination in humans and this is determined mainly by the presence or absence of y chromosome that is the presence or absence of y chromosome determines whether or determines the formation of uh, the uh, male as well as the female uh, uh, sex organs or reproductive systems so early human embryos has a pair of uh, uh, indifferent gonads with two ducts which is called as the Mullerian duct which is capable of giving rise to female reproductive structure and the Wolfian duct which is capable of giving rise to male reproductive structure. So this is what is called as an indifferent or an undifferentiated gonad. An undifferentiated gonad is a gonad which is seen in early embryo which is early as 5 weeks. So, before 5 weeks, you can see such a type of gonad in an embryo, which is called as an embryonic gonad or an undifferentiated gonad, which this is called as an undifferentiated gonad because this particular gonad is having the potential to develop either into a male type of pattern or a female type of pattern. So, every human embryo will be having such an undifferentiated gonad in the early embryonic stages where it can move to a male pattern of uh, reproductive uh, system development or a female pattern of development. Uh, so this undifferentiated gonad is having the uh, potential to develop into any of the uh, two. And further development into male and female gonad is determined by the presence or absence of Y chromosome. So from here, the next development to this or this is determined by the presence or absence of Y chromosome. So we will first take uh, what happens to this indifferent gonad if the embryo is XY. That means if the embryo is having XY chromosome. So if uh, the embryo is, uh, uh, if the embryonic cells of the particular embryo is XY, the sex chromosomes are XY, what happens is the presence of Y chromosome. The Y chromosome is having a particular gene in Y chromosome which is determining the sex and that is called as the SRY gene. So, SRY stands for sex determining region of Y chromosome. That is S, S for sex determining and R for region and Y for Y chromosome. So, sex determining region of Y chromosome is SRY gene and that is present only in Y chromosome. So, if the embryo, uh, so we have taken the example of an embryo which is XY, that means it is having the Y chromosome. So, in such an embryo with a Y chromosome in it, um, the SRY gene is present. The SRY gene, it produces a particular protein or that particular protein is a hormone and that hormone is called as testis determining factor. And this particular uh, testis determining factor or the protein of that particular hormone, uh, this TDF will cause the development of the Sertoli cells in the undifferentiated gonad. So, it acts in this undifferentiated gonad if uh, Y chromosome is present, that Y chromosome is producing this SRY or is having, not producing, it is having this SRY gene. SRY gene uh, 
produces the particular is responsible for producing the particular protein or the hormone which is called as testis determining factor and this testis determining factor it acts in this undifferentiated gonads so in this undifferentiated gonads you have uh, the cells which can which is having the capability of producing sertoli cells and that sertoli cell or the um, primitive sertoli cells which is present in the undifferentiated gonads will be uh, activated and that will produce another hormone so you have y chromosome sry gene sry gene produces a hormone tdf that is stimulating the sertoli cells sertoli cells will produce another hormone called as mullerian inhibiting hormone so we said that we have a duct which is mullerian duct and that is responsible for producing female reproductive structures and when that mih that is mullerian inhibiting hormone is produced this causes the degeneration of the mullerian duct so you can see that so this one this blue color is the mullerian duct so uh, the formation of this uh, uh, the, so the or the activation of the sertoli cells causes mullerian inhibiting hormone to be produced and as a result this blue tube will be degenerated or that will be uh, broken off or that will undergo degeneration and what happens next is under the influence of the uh, hcg produced by the placenta in the early stages uh, uh, in the first stage uh, the embryo itself uh, produce hcg uh, in the early from uh, 1 to 8 days uh, or so or in the first two weeks the embryo is producing the hormone called as hcg human chorionic gonadotropin and that is responsible or that is the hormone which is being detected in the pregnancy test kit after the embryo is implanted and after the placenta is formed hcg is produced by the placenta and the same hcg is responsible for activating the lady primitive lady cells which is present in the gonad so this is white is a gonad so they activate the lady cells hcg activate the lady cells in the gonad producing the hormone testosterone and when testosterone is formed the wolfian duct in the under the influence of uh, testosterone the wolfian duct will uh, will differentiate into the male ducts like the epididymis the urethra ureters etc all those uh, tube connected to the uh, male reproductive system uh, will be produced from the Uh, wolfian duct so this is how a male uh, type of uh, uh, reproduct also testosterone also causes the development of the uh, external male genitalia like the scrotal sac uh, then uh, uh, the uh, the uh, penis etc so all the external structures are also uh, induced by uh, this uh, testosterone after this particular cycle so uh, uh, to, uh, uh, the particular uh, gonad or the testis whatever the gonad meet the undifferentiated gonad is usually present inside the body and only after a stage of development or in a later stage of development if it is a male uh, the testis it descends to a particular opening called as a inguinal canal in the pelvic region there is an opening called as inguinal canal and through the inguinal canal the testis descends into the scrotum so only after the scrotal sac etc is formed in the early stage of development the descent of the testis occurs so this is uh, the uh, how a male is uh, male pattern is developed coming to the female one if the embryo is a female with xx what happens is the y chromosome is absent all the uh, cascade is absent sry is absent if sry is absent mih is absent if um, mih is absent uh, then uh, the sertoli cells uh, the mullerian duct will not be degenerated and if mullerian duct is not getting degenerated uh, simultaneously without any other uh, influence any other hormonal influence etc uh, the wolfian duct will start to develop into the female reproductive structures of female reproductive duct as you see here the ovary duct the uterus uh, the vagina etc all uh, the female structures are developed from this particular uh, tube or the embryonic tube which is called as the mullerian duct so the absence of testosterone causes the gonad to develop into the ovary and uh, naturally produces uh, the uh, the Uh, sex hormones which are called as estrogen so this is what so the same thing is given in this particular diagram that we discuss how uh, a, a human embryo forms a male type of sex organs as well as a female type of sex organs after the sex is determined by the hormones sorry after the sex is determined by the chromosome
after chromosomal sex determination after uh, uh, sperm and an egg has fused what happens next is what we discuss here so coming to the uh, second type of uh, system in this xx system which is xx x0 system which is called as the protena type and this is seen in hemipteran insect grasshoppers etc so here the females uh, possess a pair of chromosomes whereas the male possesses only one type of sex chromosome uh, here the female possesses uh, two pairs um, uh, i have missed the word here females are uh, heterogametic and males are homogametic so here the absence of sex chromosome uh, the absence of sex chromosome in males is denoted by uh, uh, the letter o and hence it is called as xo method okay so here uh, the females possesses uh, uh, a pair of sex chromosome which is xx male possesses only one sex chromosome that is why it is called as x0 and heterogametic the absence of sex chromosome in males is denoted by the letter zero hence it is called as x0 method so it differs from xy system in the absence of y chromosome uh, that's only difference and females here also they are homogametic while males are heterogametic half with x chromosome half without any any sex chromosome uh, the sex of the offspring here also it is determined by the sperm which is fertilizing the egg coming to the uh, this last system and the last method in the case of uh, uh, the uh, chromosomal sex determination and this is seen in birds butterflies moths fishes reptiles etc and uh, here the females are uh, heterogametic that's the opposite of uh, xx xy system and to uh, clearly distinguish between uh, this we have uh, or they have used uh, different alphabets other than x and y so here also they are the same sex chromosome but to differentiate or to know the other one is the xx xy system this is another system which is seen in birds we they have or the uh, the proposers have used a different alphabet for this so here the males are homogametic with zz chromosomes so here the sex is determined uh, by the egg that is getting fertilized because the all the sperms are same and here only the uh, the egg is different uh, so in this case uh, z containing egg is fertilized with z it gives a male z containing uh, uh, fertilizers with w containing egg it give rise to a female and the next system is x0 xx the same with uh, the uh, x0 xx system so here the female is hetero same again heterogametic without uh, a chromosome and males are homogametic this is also seen in some type of butterflies and moths so the female is heterogametic and males are homogametic here also the sex is determined by the type of egg which is getting fertilized the only difference is here that is if egg without a sex chromosome is fertilized with said containing sperm the embryo will be z o the other is the same this is homogametic the heterogametic female is being produced here so these are the uh, different types of sex determination uh, that comes under chromosomal type in the next session or in the coming session we will be discussing about uh, genetic balance theory and some uh, unusual type of uh, Uh, sex determination that is seen in drosophila etc and also in the case with uh, uh, our honey bee colony etc and after that we'll discuss the environmental sex determination as well as the hormonal sex determination uh, so with this we conclude this particular section uh, thanks for hearing